Hello and welcome to my workshop. So today we're going to be doing a how-to and that's going to be on making a roll cage and brazing or silver soldering the cage together for this 3D printed BW thing. Alright, so let's get started. So I'll be going over brazing or silver soldering. It's essentially the same thing. There's multiple different forms this comes in. The, the stuff I use is a uh, safety seal 45 and it comes in a roll. It looks a lot like your electrical solder, but it, you know, it's obviously not. It's, it's much stronger. And I would say it's as strong as a well, but roll cage in a one tenth scale, uh, you're not going to see much difference between the two. Matter of fact, I've seen more welds fail than I have silver solder. So I'm just taking this stainless steel capillary tubing and getting this bent up to shape. I've drawn a one-to-one -one scale template of what I'm looking for and on that plywood and I'm just going to bend those both pieces to match. Now the bender I have is a bench mounted bender and it has a lot of uh, accessories, a lot of different forms to, to do the bending around and it's a little more repeatable but you could certainly do this with a hand bender. It, it, I've done that for years and I just recently got this one but it, it just makes it a little more uh, precise and a little bit easier to bend. So my thought here was I was going to take the plywood, mount the scale metal supplies tabs down wet the plywood down a bit and then kind of sneak the heat up by heating up the uh, tubing first and working it down to the tab. I guess that plywood was just so dry that it didn't take long before it started to catch fire and then the uh, soot and stuff was contaminating the joint and it, the, nothing would stick. I tried to uh, you know cool it down with a wet towel and it, and it just wasn't working. So what I did is I just switched up, you know, in, inverted the, uh, the tubing and take the scale metal supply with them helping hands, just kind of work my way up to it. It's a little bit more difficult. I mean, you basically you're upside down and you're having to get that piece just right. You know, if you take your time, you can get that done. So here you can see where I'm kind of sneaking the heat up to it. You don't want to get it too hot too quick. So if you end up burning that flux, the solder won't stick at all. It'll roll off just like it's water on oil. So I use a MAP gas, which is a little bit hotter than your uh, acetylene gas you have. What I end up doing is I just do short bursts and kind of work my way up to the heat. So I, I give it a little bit of heat, give it a little rest. It's gonna get hotter in some spots than others. There's material thicknesses, some are thin, some are thick. And so if you just kind of slowly heat it up, eventually it'll kind of come to a, a good heat that's equal, and then you'll be able to do your soldering. So here I'm doing a uh, fish mouth for joining the two uh, pieces of tubing together. So what I do is I take a, a regular flat file, turn it up on edge and make a groove. And then I take a round file, I think it's actually a chainsaw file, and just run it into that groove to get the shape of the tubing. So whenever possible, I like to get the pieces bolted right into where they need to be at the final position to do the soldering in place. Now, it's a little bit dangerous because I mean this is a 3D printed body which obviously uh, has a high potential of melting and so but you, if you're just very cognizant about where the, the flame is being directed then you're, you're doing okay. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be a problem. Another thing you'll notice is that to hold the piece in, in place what I've done is I've squeezed that back of the roll cage together with some masking tape which puts a little bit of stress and a little bit of, of pinching on that front and holds that front bar in place. And when I, I'm done, I can just pull the tape off and it kind of springs back to where it needs to be. And then you can put the back piece in. So it's a little bit hard to see in the vise and maybe not everybody has a vise. So I just wanted to show that you can do this by hand. So you just kind of take your time, put a little notch in it, take your file, 
And once you get it started, then then you can you know go to town and get that shape. And it doesn't have to be a straight on shape either. These are just 90 degrees, but you can make whatever, you know, 30, 60, whatever angle you're looking for to, to make it line up. Because the most important part with the soldering is you have to have good contact, one, one piece of metal to the next. I'm just using a little popsicle stick and applying a generous amount. You don't want too much because it's just going to heat up and roll off and make a big mess, but you want to have enough. And you want to make sure it's it's coated all the surface as well because where there is flux, the solder will go. So if there's not flux, it's a good chance you won't get a, a, you know any solder to flow there. And so you can see, as I mentioned before, I just put a little bit of heat give it a rest, put a little bit of heat, move it around, try to be thoughtful of what the thickest material is and maybe a little bit more heat on that side than the thinner stuff. So the, the stuff going across is a four by three millimeters, a little bit thinner wall than the five by two that I have going down the side. And so you just want to kind of think through like what's the thickest stuff and where do I get the heat? Like I said, if you give it a second or two to rest, it'll, you'll start to see that solder changing color. And, and it gets almost clear. And that's what that's doing, it's cleaning the metal and getting it prepped and ready for the solder to flow into. These little uh, torch heads, they have a, a pretty big flame, but in general, you can do most things. Now, what you gotta think about is order of operation. So, if you have a couple of uh, joints that are coming together at the same spot, you might wanna think about how you can get all of those to fit together at the same spot so you can solder them all at once. Because as you can imagine, with the heat flowing down this metal, as you're heating up the one joint, if the other one's close enough, then, that heat will actually cause that other joint to become uh, molten again. And then if there's any kind of tension or it's not being held in place uh, by another joint that's soldered, then it could, has the potential to fall loose. Yeah, so once you get that joint heat it up and you see I almost went a little bit too far there it starts to glow red you have to back off give it some rest and so you don't burn that that flux but once you get that joint heated up enough so that it starts to get clear and clean then you want to introduce your your silver solder now you're generally like with most soldering you're wanting to have the heat be in the metal and you're going to put the solder into the metal to, to get the heat but with this, it's so thin that I I do a little bit of cheating. I do put the silver solder into the flame a bit just to get it started. Then there's still enough heat in there in that joint that you're not going to get a cold joint, but you're you don't have to get it so hot that you're going to cause a risk of you know having another joint come loose or you know in this case melting a piece of this uh, 3D printed body. You can see here, I got that other joint. There was a little bit of tension on it and I, it sprung, which is not a problem. So I just ended up grabbing a pair of pliers, heated the joint back up, moved it into place, held it for a few seconds, and then, then you're good. So, you know, a nice little quick project to help a friend out, you know, give you some opportunity to show off the brazing and silver soldering. Hopefully it's a help. Lots of other little projects coming up. Lots of fun things. Until then, we'll see you on the rocks.